Good morning, John. So I got my mail-in ballot this week, and there was something on it that made me pretty angry. So I open up my ballot and I start going through it, and here are the three federal elections that I get to vote in. There's five candidates for president. The last one listed is Kamala Harris, the Democrat. There's four for the Senate race. The last one listed is the Democrat. And there's three for the House race. The last one listed is Monica Trinnell, the Democrat. Now, if you're familiar with Montana, you know that we are what we call a red state, and so the Republicans are generally in power here. And so my mind immediately thought to itself, is this something that the people in power are doing specifically to give themselves an advantage. And all three of those, the Democrat is the last person on the list. And this isn't like a thing that doesn't matter. Decades ago, when California switched from listing incumbents first and then challengers to ordering alphabetically, they were able to see that there was an advantage of up to 5% to candidates listed first. That could obviously easily sway a lot of races, but it's like also kind of not better to give advantage to people whose names just happen to be earlier in the alphabet. So, what are you supposed to do about this? I mean, maybe nothing. Maybe you could just go alphabetical. Maybe you could let the election officials decide based on what they want to do. Well, actually, at least in Montana, you do something else. It's worth saying right here that the United States of America is the United States of America. Each state has their own laws, including their own election laws. And each county has to comply with those laws, but within them, they can be creative in all their own ways. It's a weird way to do it, but that's how we do it. So how is it done here in Montana? How do we determine our ballot order? Well, I'll tell you, when I found out, I was relieved and had just a tiny bit of my faith restored. And it all has to do with a code on my ballot that I actually can't show you. But before we get to that, I have to tell you about something else. We do surveys of the audience of this channel, and one thing that we see is that we vote more than almost any group of people in America. Over 90% of the people who are eligible to vote who fill out that survey Vote. So most of you got this on lock, but for the ones who don't, Vote.org lets you easily check if you're registered, figure out how to register if you're not, get a sample ballot so you know what's going to be on the ballot when you get to your polling place, or if you're able to, this is different, of course, in different states, figure out how to vote by mail, which if that's available to you, you should sign up to do it. It's great. Don't let the clout chasers on the internet convince you that it doesn't matter because like, why else would all of the richest people do it? They have lots of money and power, and yet they always show up to vote, almost like it's the one way in which they they have the exact same amount of power as everyone else. But back to the code. Down here at the bottom of my ballot, which I'm not going to show you, there's a code that's made up of two parts separated by a hyphen. The second part is my district, which is quite small. And I don't want people to know where I live with that level of specificity. So that's why I'm not telling you what the code is. But the first part, is the ballot or sequence number. Let's look at one of them that's not mine. 17 Helg 96. Helg 96 is the district, which is near to me, but not near enough that I'm worried about it. And that's important because we're not just voting in federal elections and they have to send you the right ballot with all the right candidates on it, including all the local ones. And which local election you vote in is determined by where you live. Quite granularly, so granularly that I didn't want to show you my district. But the sequence or ballot number is a separate thing. Since every district, and there's a Ton of them, is getting a different ballot anyway, the candidates on each ballot, it turns out, are in a different order. To eliminate bias, the candidates are initially ordered in alphabetical order, but then it gets shifted by one for every ballot in the sequence. So weirdly, it's actually not quite randomized. It's alphabetical order, but shifted for each district. It's just like the top name goes on the bottom, and then the top name goes on the bottom, and the top name goes on the bottom, and it just rotates around like that. So in fact, even though my ballot has only Democrats on the bottom, every candidate gets to be on the top an equal number of times. And if we look at this sample ballot for Helg 96, Kamala Harris is on top. I tell you about this for like three reasons. First, I've seen this meme a few times, you've probably seen it too, that everything is a conspiracy theory if you don't know anything. But that's actually, I think, overly mean about it, because that's not actually what's going on. In fact, everything is a conspiracy theory when you don't trust anything. If I didn't have any trust in the people who run the elections in Montana, and I looked at this, I might run out there and post something on social media being like, Montana's only putting Democrats in the last spot. And then maybe that would go viral. And then later there would be a correction, but the correction wouldn't go viral. And a bunch of people would have further lost faith in that system. And it would go viral because it would be confirming a bias that we have. That the people who have power already want to hold onto that power. And that's like the case. Obviously. In fact, that's why ballots used to have the incumbent first and then the challengers after. The people 
who were in charge were the incumbents, so they put their name first. And that's the other thing I want to talk about here. We don't have this system where we make sure that everybody gets an equal amount of time on the top, thus trying to negate some of these ballot order effects, because magically everything is perfect. We have it because somebody looked at the old system and thought, that doesn't seem fair. And then they did science to confirm that it in fact was not fair. And then they did policy to make it so that it was more fair. So there's a part of this story for me that's like, oh, things are like kind of okay. But there's another part that's like, but only because people worked hard and thought hard and fought hard. And even though it's hard, it's not easy to have every ballot have names in different orders. Even though it's hard, it's worth working to make it more fair. And enough people agreed about that that that's the system that we have now in Montana. It's not the same system everywhere, but I'm glad that we have the system that we have here. Also worth noting, this doesn't just go for mail-in ballots. The ballots are also like this in the voting booths. Ultimately, I think that we do it in this way because the people in charge of elections want the result to most accurately reflect the desires of the people who live in the place. And that's like good. I went from being frustrated to being a little impressed by the secret, but also not secret code on the bottom of my ballot. Again, I know most of you got this on lock, but if you find yourself procrastinating fascinating any individual element of the voting process, vote.org is there for you. Just go now if you're not sure if you're registered, if you've moved, if you need to know where your polling place is, any of that stuff, they've got the information for you. John, I'll see you on Tuesday.